So, this is the story of how I built a plane. But in order to tell this story, we need to go back. Back to the year 1999. I was six years old and my dad had told me about these two guys who were flying their weight shift microlites from the southern tip of South America to the southern tip of Africa. Like seriously, they, they went the whole way, like the long way around. They were passing through my hometown and we headed out to meet them. After these two glorified lawnmowers landed, two weathered and wind-burnt adventurers got out, overflowing with stories of wild adventures. That's the day I met Mike. For the next 22 years, I'd be following Mike's endeavors and adventures closely, and every so often, we'd cross paths. Just like any dreamer, Mike never stopped. He continued on his odyssey and filled his life with many chapters of extraordinary feats. And throughout his time, Mike became quite an accomplished aircraft designer. He designed and developed a series of incredibly capable airplanes. Most recently, he designed this, the Sling 4 High Wing. And that's what I'm gonna build. The thing is, Sling makes kits. That means as the builder, you get a big pile of parts. And it's your job to put those parts together methodically and thoroughly until you end up with something that hopefully resembles an airplane. The plan is to build my very own Sling 4 High Wing, nicknamed Zazu. Zazu will be powered by what is without a doubt the most advanced aviation engine in existence, the Rotax 915 IS. For me, airplanes are nothing but tools for adventure. And that is exactly what I'm building Zaza to be, the ultimate tool for adventure. Once done, I'm going to do something pretty wild. I'm going to fly Zazu around the world, and I'm going to take you with. I could have built this anywhere in the world, but having the factory next door, well, that's just going to make this way easier. So I've temporarily moved to Johannesburg, South Africa and rented this hangar from my friend James. It's pretty sick. It's got an apartment in it, a climbing wall, and more space than I could ever need. Simply speaking, airplanes comprise of a handful of components. The main fuselage, the tail, the empennage, the wings, and of course, the engine. I started with the wings for no particular reason. In previous episodes, we covered the build of the main spars, the ribs, and the initial assembly of the main structure. I've still got a lot of work ahead of me. I'm just sitting on the floor here and kind of taking in the fact that this hunk of metal that I'm busy riveting together right now is going to fly me around the world. And I'm going to be flying friends in it and family in it. And I'm going to have the craziest adventures of my life. And I'm building it. All right, um, <laughs> I've been sick. I've been really sick and I've been out of action for a while. So now that I'm like sort of almost good to go again, it's time to catch up. It doesn't mean I'm like, I'm really far behind. And as you guys can tell, it's a huge old mess in here. In a nutshell, I gotta finish the wings probably today. I gotta like really hustle on them because they need to go into paint. They're mostly there. Um, the tanks are done, so the tip tank's there, main tank's back there. I just need to throw in the wiring, set the wash out, put the bottom skin on. So the, the, the wings on the high wing, I'm building them inverted because when you set the wash out, whatever skin you've set first, does distort just a little bit. So I'm hoping by setting it on the top, so doing the top skin first, and then setting the wash out, the bottom skin, which is the one you'll see the most, will be, uh, will be perfect. And then I've got to build the empennage, and I haven't even touched it. Like, it's completely untouched. So that's a lot of work as well. I've got like three days. Three days to do an enormous amount of work. Tip tank, the aux tank on, bolts on through the web of the spar. You can see these two main bolts, There's six in total. I've got the breather tubes in. This was by far the most consuming process, mainly because I wanted to make sure I've got them properly shielded. So I've got some Teflon tube in there. And yeah, it can still move if it needs to. So when you fit the main tank, you need to be able to pull this out. So the Teflon tube allows you to do that. Next up is wiring. This is the standard wiring harness that comes with the kit. Doing everything upside down makes uh, wiring a bit harder. So I gotta 
like uh, preemptively fit the stringer and run the wiring through here. Um, I've got some clamps that I'm gonna rivet on here and here just to neaten it up. Throw grommets in everywhere and then uh, that'll take care of the, the lighting out to the wingtip. So in addition to the standard harness, I'm running data and power out to the wingtip. The idea being I'm gonna fit a permanent sort of setup here for cameras. So I haven't designed it yet, but I'm gonna jump into CAD, design a set of stringers or a reinforcement plate that'll run along the bottom skin with an inspection panel here. And so I can at any point customize a mount and then I'll have power and everything right here. I'll have a USB hub sitting right here. I'm using a two core for ground and power, and then I'm using a three core for um, data. Starting to look like a wing. I am absolutely exhausted. By far the most time consuming thing has been the fuel lines. So because of the high wing breather line setup, um, it's been so time consuming and yeah. I'm gonna try and do one final job before bed. Basically I've decided I'm gonna use these inspection panels and the existing design and structure around them. I need to cut another hole, taking a trace off of that one, which I'm gonna use as my template. And I'm gonna add a stringer here as well. Are we gonna run it? Well, I'm gonna run it in line with that stringer there. line to do but I'll do that when I do the tip. I'm gonna do this one now. Um, probably gonna be an all-nighter trying to get it done. A lot of work to do. I've already got the wiring harness in. Um, this is the side with the pitot tube so I need to put the regulator on. I'm gonna use these rubber standoffs and I'm gonna mount it up here. Um, that way I can access it through the inspection panel that's right here if I ever need to. Um, actually, I probably put it here because the inspection panel's right here. Losing my hand grenades, fuse, baby, don't refuse my truth. But it's up to you now to choose. I want you to stay true to what's right for you. No matter who, I will know what will ever say. Just find your way and try to stay. ourselves a set of wings. Pretty freaking stoked. Still got the wingtips to do, but other than that, we're done. Just busy introducing uh, Teddy to the new wings, you know, making sure they're acquainted. But yeah, super stoked. They turned out really nice. And uh, I set them in this position because I, I basically joined the jig here, perfectly level. And then I compared the washout on that end to this end, and these wings are absolutely identical. So, very stoked with that. I'm gonna go fly for a bit.
using a wind vane. With the wings and empennage done, I made the decision to move the build across to Hangar 7. Hangar 7 is basically the sling equivalent of the legendary Skunk Works department at Lockheed Martin. The big advantage of assembling the rest of the airplane here is having Dylan, Dane and John out at my disposal whenever needed. These dudes are awesome. Not only are they wizards at problem solving, but when it comes down to it, they're just a bunch of really good dudes that are fun to hang out with. Today's a big day. We gotta marry the tail with the main fuselage. The aluminum joins up with the composite right here. It's a very complex joint to have this jig, which is huge, but makes life way easier. I'm gonna get stuck in, and by the end of today, there should be an entire fuselage, which is very exciting. I didn't even plan this, but the fact that the Rotax banner is right there is pretty freaking exciting. It's a pretty big box, and, uh, and in here is literally the heart of the machine, the heart of my airplane. I'm extremely lucky and excited and grateful to be in a position in my life where I get to own one of these, and yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Rotax fan, you guys know that. If it wasn't for Rotax and, and the literal I innovation that their engines brought to the industry, the, the, the creation of an entirely new category of aircraft, I would never have been able to fly. There was no way that I would have ever been able to afford to fly. I, I am incredibly grateful for this company, not only for their support on this project, but for their just their story, their odyssey, I guess, and, and how that's enabled me to find my thing, find my passion and pursue it. I've got well over 2,000 hours behind these motors and uh, they're just magic. There's some magic potion that those engineers over there have and they're able to make incredible motors. And there's a lot of ambitions that I have with this airplane, a lot of records I wanna set, and I'm only able to do that thanks to the technology that is in this box. So, yeah, time to open it up. Oh, okay. I'm actually so excited, it's ridiculous. It's actually really well wrapped up and I wasn't expecting that. This is the fuse box. So this is gonna go on the firewall uh, pretty much right away. ECU. Dual lane ECU, and uh, this needs to go on the firewall, but on the inside. In here, fuel pump assembly. I was contemplating getting the bigger oil tank. The only reason I would contemplate, or was contemplating using one is because of my ocean crossings, but um, this is the standard size one. First time I ever flew behind a Rotax 912 was like early 2000s, and they've, the, the oil tanks have pretty much stayed the same. Uh, the shape of the dipstick has changed a few times, but other than that, I, I, I believe, I, I might be wrong, but I believe that this is um, pretty much just the same tank ever since. An operator's manual. I freaking love stickers. This is cool, these are really nice stickers. Oh, that is so exciting. Trying to build an airplane in four months is a silly idea for a lot of reasons. Mostly because it becomes a logistical nightmare. I had originally planned to build a sling in New Zealand. That's a long way from South Africa. That meant I had to lean heavily on bird floods to help me get my engine from New Zealand to South Africa in time. Bird floods are the Rotax aircraft engine distributors for Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. I can't thank them enough for going the extra mile to get my engine to me despite all the shipping backlog. This isn't the usual case, but they believed in this project and with a kind hand from Comet Aviation, 
they made it happen against all odds. I'll also be getting comprehensive maintenance training from them on my new engine, ensuring that I can maintain it for years to come. I'll share that in future videos. I thought I'd actually give you guys like a thorough update on where we are, because a lot has changed. There's a lot of little stuff going on that is just not too exciting to film, but is super critical to the airplane. Uh, the fuel system is in, uh, the fuel selector with hard lines running here. We have the header tank, engine ECU is in, boost pump. So this is a, a boost pump with a bypass. Um, one-way valve. There's a lot of little bonding work. So there's a few hard points that had to be bonded in This is for the seat belt in the back as well the two big ones and then rudder cables are in the, These are all like quite complex little components um, that need to be built and fit You know, it's it's a it's a composite airplane for the most part. So there's a lot of delicate work to do here motor is on this is uh, unreal, honestly, to see it on here. The engine mount's been torqued, so it's on here for good. I might have mentioned to you guys, the firewall forward stuff, so all of the routing of the cables, um, oil lines, and uh, coolant lines, there's just the general install of the motor. I'm leaving up to the guys from the factory, because these guys are the best in the world with this stuff. And um, I can do it, but why not use the best guys in the world for the job if you can? So a bit of a painful one to surrender and leave it up to someone else because the dream was to build this airplane entirely myself, but with the deadline, that's just not gonna happen. So tail here was an interesting one. This was a very complex job actually um, to rivet. I'm just gonna lift this up. <coughs> Yeah, just to show you guys, there's a lot of tension, a lot of material trying to conform around the ribs, and this is a pain in the butt. And the reason this is so complex is this is the tail dragger, obviously, so there's just an, a lot of brackets and reinforcements in here, and there's a double skin, actually triple skin, there's an internal cradle, there's a lot of material in here, and riveting that and getting it to look good was, uh, was a lot of work. So. Yeah, that's my airplane. It's looking freaking fantastic. You know, the wing box is not on yet. It is over there. Once it's put on, the uh, turtle, turtle deck can be bonded in. And then this thing's ready for paint. Once, it's, uh, once that's on, it'll go into paint, hopefully end of the week. That was just a rundown of Zazu as it is right now. The empennage and wings are over at my hangar, where I'm uh, staying at the moment. We will at some point move this over there. It is just way easier right now because we're building uh, SHW's replacement. Um, it's just easier to do them both in tandem. Um, and so that's why we've put Zazu here as well. All right, I've been, I've been pretty sick this morning, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm getting a bit of a late start, but Today's the day. Today, um, a lot's happening today. It's Saturday. Uh, a lot of the guys are coming in today to help me put the wings on and close up the top box. Essentially finish the entire structure of the airplane so that um, I can go into paint today. I need to also put the lines on it, um, do the majority of the line work. So. It's just an enormous amount of work today to do today, but um, yeah, hopefully my body will let me. Uh, I was really hoping I'd be back on track today, but oh well. Right, even though it's a Sunday, um, Sean was very kind to come by and inspect the carry through so that I can work late and finish up. So yeah, managed to close it up. Only problem is it's late and so the, there's no uh, pressure in the air system so I don't have any of my normal tools right now and I don't know how to put the major compressor on. So um, I had to hand pull these, which the Avinox are incredibly hard to pull and you dip them in tank sealant before you put them in. So it got really messy, which I'm a bit annoyed about, but it is what it is. We have exactly 10 days 
until the DAR arrives. It's a little, it's in, it's actually impossible for me to fathom right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's consuming. It's very consuming, but uh, I've been at it. Got a few jobs done today. And uh, so tomorrow, tomorrow essentially, we'll be able to put the turtle deck on, which is the composite piece of the top. And then the airplane could go to paint, which is very exciting. This means paint is the most time consuming thing here. Ta paint is gonna probably take a week. Um, I mean, uh, hopefully less. So yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be freaking crazy. So this is, from what I've seen so far, definitely the best fitting baggage door. Um, and I've put a lot of effort into that. So I'm quite happy with that. So I added an extra door in here, uh, inspection panel. Um, it was a lot of work to get this cut nice and round, but I'm really happy with it. Put an extra stringer in right across. And then I put a plate in here that'll house the USB port. Um, that'll be a data fed USB port as well. And that is on riv nuts. So that means this is nice and sturdy now. There's no flex at all. And I can use this, it's sort of a bayonet fitting, I can use this as a, as a platform for cameras. So I'm gonna integrate, I'm gonna do a really nice uh, composite piece, a shroud that integrates the, uh, the GoPro right in there. And I'll be able to, with one switch, turn all my GoPros on at the same time to start recording and switch them off again. Very, very stoked on that. That was a lot of work, but um, I'm glad with how it turned out. Turned out really good. Oh man, that was hard work, but she's here. Sabat and the crew are gonna take good care of this airplane. They're actually gonna paint it tonight, so by tomorrow morning, there will be paint on here. I know a lot of you wanting to learn to fly, so I asked my friends at Sporties if I could arrange you guys a little discount. So, there's a code for you in the description that gives you $30 off the entire Learn to Fly course for private pilots. I hope it helps out a little and gets you out flying and adventuring. The Learn to Fly course is the best in the game. It's all online, and between the web version, the mobile app, and even the new TV apps, we've got a long list of features to help you learn to fly. With over 15 hours of beautifully produced videos, you even get a flight instructor portal and direct integration with AOPA's Flight Training Advantage. A huge thank you to Sporty's Pilot Shop for being such a big supporter of the channel over the years. I'll see you guys next week.